everyone! Welcome to A Wild Approach. I decided to start a series on native plant profiles. And when I say native plant, um, I'm specifically talking about my area. I live in East Tennessee, so you will need to double check if you're in a different state or even a different part of this state. Um, like, I think West Tennessee can be a little bit different on some plants, but for the most part, if you're in Tennessee, these will be native for you as well, most likely. But I did want to start a series. A lot of these plants are not just native to Tennessee. A lot of them are native in the southeast or the east or the northeast. You know, it depends on the plant. So a lot of people should be able to use these videos as a guide on what these plants look like and their uses and just different small bits of information about these plants. So in today's episode, I wanted to discuss Virginia creeper. And uh, please don't uh, shoot the messenger if I pronounce the name wrong, the scientific name, because I don't think I've ever actually said the scientific name before. So I had to look up how to pronounce it, and I think it is Parthenocesis quinquifolia. Parthenocesis quinquifolia. Now, <laughs> I could be wrong. Okay, I could be wrong, but that is what the internet is telling me. So I think that is the, the pronunciation. And so let's discuss a few facts about Virginia Creeper. According to wildflower.org, it is a woody deciduous vine, and it can climb or trail 3 to 40 feet. The structure on which it climbs is the limiting factor. It climbs by means of tendrils with discs that fasten onto bark or rock. Its leaves with five leaflets, occasionally three or seven, radiating from the tip of the petiole, coarsely toothed with a pointed tip, and tapered to the base up to six inches long. Leaves provide early fall color, turning brilliant mauve, red, and purple. Inconspicuous flowers are small, greenish, in clusters, and they appear in spring. Fruit is bluish, about one-fourth inch in diameter. Virginia creeper can be used as a climbing vine or a ground cover. Its leaves can carpet any surface in luxuriant green before turning brilliant colors in the fall. Its tendrils end in adhesive-like adhesive -like tips, giving this vine the ability to cement itself to walls and therefore need no support. The presence of adhesive tips inside instead of penetrating rootlets also means it doesn't damage buildings the way some vines do. It is one of the earliest vines to color in the fall. A vigorous grower, it tolerates most soils and climatic conditions. So, I want to talk about what I've noticed in my garden about this plant. This plant does indeed have beautiful and brilliant fall color. Um, it is... It kind of varies like throughout the plant and depending on how much sun that part of the plant gets. I notice that the more shade that it gets, the less bright the fall color is. And sometimes it just kind of doesn't really have as much fall color in the shade. But when it's exposed to enough light, it turns a gorgeous orangey red or a deep red. It depends on, just depends on the plant, I guess, and the, maybe depends on the light. But it's such a beautiful, beautiful plant. But I want you to keep in mind, it has five leaflets. Five leaflets, not three. And I say that because, in my experience, Virginia creeper grows in a lot of places where poison ivy grows, and vice versa. Poison ivy grows in a lot of the same places that Virginia creeper grows. And what that causes is it can cause people to mistake in Virginia creeper for poison ivy. And so it's really important to note the differences. So poison ivy, which I'm also going to show you in this video, it's growing right near this Virginia creeper, but it's, it's different. You can see that poison ivy has three leaflets. 
And poison ivy, even though I, I'm allergic to it, and I, <laughs> therefore, I do have a bias against poison ivy. The only thing that I personally do like about poison ivy, even though I don't like the plant technically, is poison ivy also has brilliant, gorgeous fall color, and it's different fall color. Um, typically, poison ivy has more of a peachy orange pinky peach orange color in the fall, at least in my garden, in my experience. Whereas the Virginia Creeper is more of a deep red, a crimson, very, very saturated red. And I, I don't know. I mean, it's probably different in different gardens, you know. But in my experience, the Virginia Creeper in the fall is that very bright and sometimes deep maroon red. Whereas the poison ivy fall color is more of a peachy, like pastel-y orange color. And and to me it's gorgeous. And I was actually surprised. I was like, wait, that's poison ivy? Like what? It's so pretty. Um, but I don't want to touch it and I don't want it to touch me. So that is that's the main information about Virginia Creeper, but let's get into some other lesser known facts about Virginia Creeper. Virginia creeper is also the larval host plant for the Virginia creeper sphinx moth. And if you've never seen the Virginia creeper sphinx moth, here it is right now. It is an absolutely beautiful moth. Look at how interesting the wings are and the markings. And that thing, its larva stage, needs Virginia creeper leaves to eat. So please remember that Virginia creeper is not just a beautiful plant for fall time. It's not just a beautiful plant as a ground cover or to cover a wall, but it's also a host plant for the Virginia creeper sphinx moth. And what I really like about Virginia creeper is that it has such attractive foliage, in my opinion, no matter what time of year. So when it first leaves out, you know, and it's, it's springtime and it's, the plant is just starting to wake back up and leaf back out, the leaves are really pretty and vibrant. And then throughout the season, you know, they turn that really, you know, just garden green, you know, that beautiful lush green color. And then in the fall, they turn, at least if they get enough light, they turn that beautiful red color and they're just pretty all the time in my opinion. And this area that I have it in my backyard is a very mixed bag of an area that we just decided to stop weed eating. We decided to stop mowing. We planted some native plants in here and we let the other stuff grow. If it's invasive, we try to get as many of the invasives out as possible. And as you can see, there's still a lot of invasives back here. But the Virginia creeper has started to make its way in these beautiful drifts throughout the entire area. It has spread quite a bit in just the past year or two. And so it's a great little ground cover. I've been wanting it to actually weep over my retaining wall and grow on my retaining wall, but I haven't quite been able to make it do that yet. It keeps just popping back <laughs> into the area behind the wall. I think it would do better if I had it in a in an area below the wall and let it grow up the wall. But I digress. So I think another great thing about Virginia Creeper is it's a good cover for wildlife. You know, if you love the chipmunks, if you love birds, if you love any wildlife, it's pretty good cover for them to run underneath. It's almost like little umbrellas to protect them from prying eyes, you know? And so I just really, really love Virginia Creeper. The only downside so far I've found is that it usually grows pretty close to poison ivy and I have to watch out for that because I will get the rash. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is Virginia Creeper, I mean, like it says online, it can grow up to 40 feet long. So if you or worried about any plants it's near, just keep in mind you might have to trim it back and keep it off of some of your shrubs and your trees if you don't like that look of the vine growing. 
through your shrubs and your trees, but I will say it can be pretty growing up a mature tree trunk. So if you have a really big tree and you have like, you know, it has a thick trunk, I actually highly recommend growing a little bit of Virginia creeper up it because it's actually really beautiful. It just adds to the greenery and the lushness of a garden. And I think you could create a very secret garden effect with Virginia creeper. I mean, it leaves out fairly early in the season and it has that beautiful fall color and it just has that umbrella look in my opinion because of the five leaflets and it it, it can just create such a dense vining habit and almost a weeping habit grown on an arbor or grown on a fence or grown on other trees and shrubs and things so have fun with Virginia Creeper, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about Virginia Creeper, do a little bit of your own research. I think they also produce berries that wildlife likes to eat. So take a look into that and see if you can find out more about that. Um, and let me know what you guys think of Virginia Creeper in the comments below. A lot of people actually grow it on their houses. And so, I don't know, what do you think? I think it would be beautiful growing on my retaining wall, but for some reason I can't get it to actually grow there. But I am growing it on my front yard fence, so we will see how that goes. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Until next native plant <laughs> profile episode, bye guys! Very important disclaimer at the end of this video, the berries are highly toxic and may be fatal if eaten by humans. They are good for the birds though. In fact, a lot of birds love them, especially throughout the winter, including chickadees, nuthatches, mockingbirds, catbirds, finches, flycatchers, tanagers, swallows, vireos, warblers, woodpeckers, and thrushes. So yeah, berries, great for the birds a no-go for us, <laughs> but still a great wildlife plant. To support the channel, like the video, comment, and subscribe. You can also support my work by buying art from me at macylu.com. Thanks for watching!